we welcome in Sean King from Las Vegas for our weekly segment with Sean. How you doing, man? I'm excellent. How you guys doing? Sean, up, things have gotten crazy here, man. Things are a little nuts. Well, we're, we're, we're very emotional. We're angry about Deshaun Watson. We're angry about a lot of other things, fairly so. But the Washington, Watson playing poorly is, is putting everybody in a bad mood, uh, just piling well, well, on top me, of everything let, else. Go ahead. Let, let, me, let me say this. Unfortunately for Deshaun Watson, I did not graduate from the Dan Orvlovsky School of Broadcasting. <laughs> so, so you disagree with Dan? Uh, yes, I am capable of operating under the truth does not have emotions. And right now, Deshaun Watson is playing benchable football. But I also am brought on here to bring context and truth to the Cleveland fan base. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. not getting benched. If you look uh, in New York, Aaron Rodgers is playing benchable football. They just fired the head coach. Right. So the interesting fallout from this will be what direction does Cleveland ownership decide to go? Would you agree, though, there's a difference between Aaron Rodgers and the power he might wield in an organization and Deshaun Watson and the power he may have? See, uh, I think it was, uh, man, I can't think of the character from Game of Thrones, but uh, he said power is where the people believe power is, right? And so in New York, Aaron Rodgers' power is manifested in one form. In Cleveland, Deshaun Watson's power is manifested in another. Tywin Lannister, the- Tywin Lannister, there you go. No, it, it, was, it, it, it wasn't Tywin Lannister. It was a conversation with Tywin. It was the, uh, God, I can't think his name. He, he, he had, he had no, he had his man parts cut off. Oh, the eunuch. The eunuch, yes. The eunuch, uh, yeah. The, it's Varys. It the eunuch. The Varys. 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 Yes, more Varys. Varys. Yeah. Mike, that was, Mike that giving was us bad Varys. information in our ears. It was that, a conversation that was some with Tywin. That was, that was the most disturbing that, thing. Next, next time, ask me about the Game of yeah, Thrones. Yeah, you're the expert. Yeah, we, 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 I gave that was you that. the most disturbing part of Game of Thrones, man. Reek. Reek. He was calling him Reek. Uh, so no, no. That was Deshaun's power <laughs> in Cleveland. <laughs> Deshaun's power in that's Cleveland equals Aaron Rodgers in New York. It's just does it really? Different. Well, that's a problem if it does. Absolutely, you can tell. By, you can tell by the unchecked behaviors. Remember, I said you got to have bulletproof emotions to be good in that position. Look at his body language during the game. Look at the teammates' body language towards him. Uh, look at the situation where I think I'm assuming Coach Fancy was about to go for it, and Deshaun was walking off the field, and the interaction they had, like. Here's what NFL teams don't get. This is not, not just a Cleveland problem. And, and listen, these guys aren't kids. They're, they're, they're players. But the behavior part still is applicable. If you allow your, chi- your kid to throw fits at home, don't think you can go to a five-star restaurant and he's going to behave properly. <laughs> like, they've allowed these behaviors with Deshaun Watson to kind of just keep going, missing all these layups in practice, not having great body language, not really being an assertive leader. And now that things aren't going well, they're just being magnified. You know, yeah, uh, Sean, great analogy. Sean, great analogy. When, when I was watching it, and, and I watched it twice, and the first time I watched all the plays, it just stood out to me like, you know, there's there's a play on, on a check release where I think they they, they kept in, um, you know, it was Pierre Strong on the left-hand side, and they check release on the other side with two receivers and five empty. And it was like a third and 12 or something. And Deshaun has a clean pocket. He's he's sitting there. All he got to do is check it down to Pierre Strong, and he gets eight yards and possibly can can extend the ball and, and get the first down. It just seems like there's times where he just won't, like you said, he just won't take that layup and trust his teammates to to make a play for him. Like he w- ends up rolling out, pump fake, and get hit out of bound. He pushes a guy afterwards, and it's just like what what. As a quarterback, when you see a quarterback do that, wh- what do you think is going through his head where he just can't hit the, hit the guy underneath and live to fight another day? I think right now Deshaun is a general with no army. Explain. And when you have been compensated at the level that he has, sometimes you become tone deaf to your own deficiencies. Mm-hmm. And that's where coaching circles back around into – being a major issue in Cleveland. Who's holding you accountable for the things that you're responsible for? Because it's very easy a quarterback to kind of focus in on the fact that, okay, they're not pass protecting well. Like, we don't have a lot of speed at receiver. Stefanski's not calling the right plays. 
it's very hard unless you have great coaching to be like, man, I'm not throwing the ball in rhythm consistently. I'm not making the right pass protection checks. I'm not making the accurate throw. Like I had a rule in practice with my quarterbacks, guys. And here's what I talk about learn behaviors, accepted behaviors. If they missed a layup in practice, we had to uh, get another rep after practice. So that means if we're in 707, the running back's in the flat, we throw the ball behind him, that's not a completion in my book. Right? We got a clean pocket, guy running a dig route, we got a deep ball open, we overthrow it, throw it out of bounds. You got to train the quarterback that's your responsibility to damn near be perfect in these situations. Because there'll be enough imperfect situations, and you can tell he's not being held accountable to that level. And so it's very easy for him to go into this bubble and kind of blame others, at least internally. Sean, at what point does the locker room, because you've been there too, uh, although you played the position, that was probably like thinking, is he good enough or is he not good enough? Because uh, the teams I played on, we didn't have great quarterback play, and we were always amongst ourselves kind of talking. I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, this guy's kind of looking like a little, whatever. The point is, if the team saw it and the coach didn't see it, it, it there's a disconnect, right? I mean, we're, we're, at what point do we get there with this with this team? So I think the one move that the Browns made that actually made sense, at least as far as what you're, we're talking about, D, which is the, the temperament, temperature inside the locker room, mm -hmm. is moving on from Joe Flacco and bringing in Jameis Winston. If Joe Flacco was still the backup quarterback, there might be some major issues inside of the locker room. With Jameis Winston, it won't happen because Jameis yeah, is too Sean, good. Yeah, but Sean, that's a loser's mentality. You're going to eliminate oh, competition. Absolutely for the sake of cohesion, you never no, would. And, 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 and so, Jay, this isn't about talent, because I think Jameis is a better quarterback right now than Deshaun. I think he can do exactly what Joe did, but I'm talking about the temperament of the player. But why, why can't Jameis you sell is, that as a good move to get rid of Joe Flacco? Well, I wasn't just saying, let's say it was a good move. I was just talking about, it as it pertains to Dee's question. Oh, okay. So, he asked so about in the terms current, of cohesion. Right. Right, the current oh, state of the locker room. What I'm saying is, well, like Flacco, James if says, Flacco were, it, Sean, it, it, let me just jump in. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but are you trying to say like Flacco kind of proved something last year that he was he could take them to win games and go to the playoffs? He's not here anymore, so they don't know what Jameis can do, right? Is that is that sort of what you're saying, or am I am I along the lines? I'm it, not sure. it, it's sort of what you're saying, but I think Flacco would take on the somebody's talking, damn, man, we should be playing Joe. And Joe probably just walked by, you know, like, he, 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 keep going. He not going to partake. <laughs> he not going to partake in the conversation, but he also Got not going to diffuse the conversation. Well, I know Jameis very well. If Jameis hears those guys talking about that, he going to go directly to them. Hey, listen, man, we got Deshaun back, just like we got your back. If somebody come in for you, then we got their back too. So like they brought Jameis in a yes man but, for Deshaun. No, I'm not going to say that because I think Jameis is itching to play. I just think Jameis has had been undercut before, so he's very more he, he's much oh. more sensitive to it. He's just trying to be a good teammate. I actually think that's a good – I like that quality. I think he is too. being a good teammate, Jameis, I like that quality. Yeah. That. You he, don't need somebody's sewing division. And I've yeah. we know Joe. Joe was on the show last year and said he very much wanted to come back with the Browns. I, I also know this about Joe. Joe is never going to be a bad teammate and start stirring Absolutely. things up. Joe's going to sit Absolutely. there and wait for the coach to realize what mm -hmm. everybody else that's watching the Browns has already realized. He knows that day's going to come. But the fact that the Browns let him get away because we wanted cohesion and one voice in the locker room and we didn't want a quarterback controversy, to me, I call that a loser's mentality because I watched it with you, Sean, when all of Tampa realized a quarterback change has to be made. And here comes this unknown rookie and within three weeks, all of Tampa Bay loved Sean King and he could have run for mayor and won. You do that by going on the field, balling out, and winning. You were never advocating to take over the starting job, but when you got it, you ran with it. And that's what Joe and let me, did. Let me, let me be clear here for anybody watching. The Browns screwed up. Like this whole Deshaun Watson debacle has not worked out in their favor. I'm simply saying I don't think he's benchable in the current scenario and situation like like I've got a, a diehard I know it's a lot of diehard Cleveland Brown fans but shout out to my boy Shannon he's a member at my uh little upscale bougie private cigar lounge here in Vegas if you guys are ever in town <laughs> come through this is how bad it's gotten when we were watching the highlights from other teams 
And all Shannon would say when a, a offensive highlight was good, yeah, we don't got that play. I said, yeah, we don't got that play. G boys has been saying it for years. I didn't die there. I, listen, before I got in the game, I I, I can't watch Sean. I, I can't watch these games no more. People say, G. Bush, when did you give up on Deshaun Watson? I said, bro, when I watched the 4 o'clock game, when the 4 o'clock game come on and guys is avoid the pocket, do time, first and 10. And I'm looking around and I'm, I'm looking, it's like pulling teeth. I'm like, why don't you just cut, copy and paste the whole play, the protection scheme, just have the GA go to them and say, listen, I need to cut up uh, of the Green Bay Packers versus the Giants. I want all of the no, just minutes. the fourth quarter of the Bengals Ravens game. Give I flipped me. that on after the Browns game was in yeah. the in the tank. Give me Crazy. and I'm like, different sport. Oh, this is what offensive football looks like. Give me like. the 11 and 12 cut ups and 11 and 12 personnel. And I want all of the outside inside runs and the play actions. And why can't we just steal that? Just steal it and just hold the cards up. We had it last year. Steal it. Hey, let, let me. Let me ask you guys a question. You're so funny, G. That's actually my friend Shannon. He's the one that put me on to your post game show. I got a question for for, for D because because D kind of sits in the cut and like he he's like the silent killer back there. I am. What would you do? What would you do if you were Kevin Stefanski? And and, and put it in the context of not just how he's playing now, but how you would move forward because this is an unmovable contract. Mm -hmm. This isn't oh, yeah. a trade asset when you're talking about Deshaun Watson. So when you talk about benching a player in that situation, it's not like you're going to bench him for three games and bring him back. It's done. No, no it's, it's over. over. You're moving on. Um, and so you're cutting him and paying him and saying goodbye. I mean, you sort of need him out of the locker room, don't you? If you're going to bench him, because he, that's not going to go over well uh, with the team, with him. It's just going to create sort of an awkward situation inside the facility. Agreed. So maybe that's what they're waiting on because – if you do bench him, like he's he's never going to start again, never. I have a not scenario. For the Browns, not for the Browns, you guys, and see if there's if if either of you guys think that this is doable because I've been trying to think of a safety net, an escape hatch, if you will, <laughs> and I can't find one. <laughs> but they've been working in this basement for three years. I've on been this drawing up. <laughs> but, <laughs> they but got Sean pictures. and I don't and, and and I'll admit coming into this, there are things about the contract rules that I that I'm probably not up to speed on. Here's what I would do. I would immediately bench and release Deshaun Watson. And I would hope that a team like Carolina, who I know they're in North Carolina and he played his college football in South Carolina and that there is a huge wall between those two states. But that geographic region is very well aware of what Deshaun Watson once was and once accomplished. Carolina's got buku space under the cap and, and maybe you work this out you you're, you go to the Browns this is an even better option I think if you're the Browns you call Carolina and say here's what we're going to do we're going to trade Deshaun Watson and we're going to pick up the bulk of his contract we're going to you know give us a seventh round draft pick because there's got to be something involved to make it a trade mm -hmm. and at, at that point the rebuilding clock begins to me, if you kick this can down the road till it ends two and a half years from now, that's the day the rebuilding clock begins. I just say, take your medicine, move on from it. Who knows? Jameis could come in here and ball out. I, He's I, 30 years old. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I and I agree with Dustin. I think you I would just cut to. him, but nobody's gonna trade for him. He, I don't you're care. getting him for nothing if you're Carolina. I, I just what, don't. Do, what do you have to lose if you're Carolina? Yeah, you're but getting you're, him for nothing. What is the point? But of, if you're Carolina, you're also saying we want this guy. Like if you're giving up something for a player, you're saying yeah. You're, I don't. I, I don't know. I just think it's not realistic. But I don't a, either. But I'm trying Brown's to think of an escape hatch. Sean, help me. I'll, yeah, but that's not it. If you're eating all the money anyway, there's no escape. And hatch. Why would Carolina do that? I mean, Carolina. They're not bailing. Nobody's bailing the Browns out on this. Eventually, Car I mean, Carolina is not going to. So, so, so what's Sean? the yeah. answer, Sean? What do we do so, then? So here, here's the context I think that has to be applied to this. And it's like Jay built a panic room and he's in it and he's still panicking. <laughs> <laughs> he I'm a Browns fan, bro, and I That's have that feeling that one. That's crazy. That's that a was, great that's line. A yeah, that's a good one. I'm going to put that if in my notes right now. Still, yeah. That's going to be the title if, of my book. If you're, <laughs> if you're Kevin Stefanski and you bench I'm panicking Deshaun in my panic Watts, room. 
<laughs> and you guys don't immediately become a top tier offense, you've doomed yourself. Woo! Talk to talk to us about why that is. Because right now you're operating with a lot of grace. I don't know what it is about Stefanski because he has had some success in Cleveland, but he has not gotten a quarterback position fixed. And Baker Mayfield having success kind of to me taints it just a little bit, but he's operating right now with a significant crutch because it's much easier to blame Deshaun Watson than it is to pick apart the fallacies and what they're trying to do offensively. And again, I keep saying going back to Deshaun because he's missing his layups. But schematically, pass protection wise, from a organic mesh, the mm. offense is not very good right now from a design standpoint. Mm. And so if you're the head coach, you do run the risk now. If you eliminate what everybody thinks is the problem, and the offense is still bad. <laughs> you, your head on the chopping block next. Good. Well, if he's if, if he can't, it fix can't the be offense, any worse. Yeah, I mean, Sean, it can't be any worse, no, buddy. It I mean, it's uh, it's it, if like, he's, like Garrett said, you, you can't even watch them get a standard protection. 12, 12 yard out for a first down. We were what there's were nothing we? easy with this team. One of thirteen. Hey, 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 hey this on is third how, down this is how against bad the worst defense in the this, league. Yeah, I was gonna say I was just about to bring that stat up. The Washington was the worst third down defense <laughs> in football. And the Browns went one of thirteen on third down. That yeah. says everything you need. You know how hard. Hey, watch this, guys. Watch, watch this, guys. You know how hard it is to practice all week and get in an NFL game and have thirteen chances at something and only succeed once. That's crazy. Against the worst yeah. team in the league, and it was in that, the last in that one, by the situation. way. The conversion was number yes. thirteen. They were over twelve crazy. to start. It was in garbage time. He yeah. threw for one hundred twenty. You supposed to, you supposed to get game. lucky. You're supposed to get lucky two, three times at least, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sean, we're going to hop on and break down some film later this afternoon. Give the people okay. a little teaser of what you saw breaking down the All-22 this week from Deshaun and the Browns offense, and then we'll post that later in the week on the WKYC show and on social media. But give us a little teaser of what you saw in the film that we'll break down in just a couple hours. It's not Dan Orvlowski breaking down the Jets offense. I am going right to the source. And listen, Deshaun, I know – You've had your people reach out to me, but brother, look at here. I, truth doesn't have emotions. You're not going to like this one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Deshaun's people has have reached out to you? I don't know via from him, but. But but what, it was Quincy? No, 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 no. Nah, you wouldn't. I don't. I think, I'll say this. I think Quincy, and it was Quincy didn't reach out to me. I think okay. Quincy gets a bad, a bad rap as far as his control of Deshaun Watson. Did you talk? I think Did Deshaun, you reach back to these I think people Deshaun, or no? I, I think Deshaun Watson is a grown man. I don't think Deshaun Watson listens to anybody but Deshaun Watson. And Quincy coached, thou, not thousands, but he coached seven, eight other quarterbacks. Yeah, so yeah I think he gets a, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, G. I, I don't think this is Deshaun going to Quincy for seeking comfort. I call it. I I just think Deshaun is kind of he's just, again he's a general with no army right now. Can I ask you why? For what was the purpose of someone in Deshaun's camp reaching out to you? What did they want from you? Well, first of all, they said I'm doing a hell of a job. Good. So it wasn't, you are. It, it wasn't like a yeah. It, it wasn't like a. It was actually like uh shit. I wish. Excuse me. I'm so shoot. You I wish. Uh, You're good, Sean. Don't worry. I, I, yeah, I, I wish he would actually like pay more attention to it. <laughs> you said that, <laughs> but I did. But I did get, I did get the the sense that everything's not perfect communication wise between him, staff, and what they're trying to get done. I do right. think there's a significant disconnect. But at the end of the day, man, look. To whom much is given, much is required, fellas. When you're in that pocket, as G was talking about, and it's clean and guys are open, you got to hit them. And he's not doing that on a consistent basis. Well, I'll, I'll reiterate what, what Deshaun's people told you. You're doing a hell of a job. You're, you're an incredible asset to this show. No doubt. Your input, your not just your breakdown of the X's and O's, but applying the knowledge that you've gained through your years of playing the position at a high level in the league and coaching – um, it's an invaluable asset to us. And Sean's people were smart to reach out to you. And if they were really smart, Deshaun's folks would reach out again and say, hey, listen, I set up a Zoom call with you and Sean, with you and Deshaun. Uh, work on that mind. Get it right. Because I, I think you have a lot to offer in that area. 
So I'm you. available to start. Holla at your boy. And by the way, uh, Jay, I didn't run out the back of the end zone in a live game and didn't realize it either. So, boy, look at here. I got that going for myself. Oh, shots fired at Dan. <laughs> Do you even know Dan? Do you guys have a relationship? Yeah. Or? We played together in Detroit, so I can take shots at my dog. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks, Sean.